a senior citizen's prison in Germany where everyone can walk around freely. In the USA, children testing out life in jail. Now you in the jailhouse and you slept. A weekend of yelling and drill as an educational measure. In the German senior citizen's prison, beekeeping to prevent boredom. Slowly, slowly with the ladies, otherwise you'll hurt them. Two prisons, two completely different systems. What is everyday life like in each of them and how do they differ? Bielefeld. Germany's largest senior citizen's prison is located here. The building, a former lung clinic. Everything is different here. No high walls, no barred windows, no locked doors. Instead of cells, there are rooms with lots of space, but it's still a prison. Pot, pan and the usual little things you need. The inmates? Petty criminals or serious criminals between 60 and 80 years old. For the inmates, there are walkers, hand supports and raised toilets, all senior friendly. 5.30 in the morning. This is warder Florian Hase. He has been working here for over 10 years. His first task is to check the health of the inmates. Good day. Everything all right in here? Hello. Everything all right? Very good? Okay. Thank you. The care here is more intensive than in a normal prison. And it thrives on empathic guards like Florian Hase. Yeah, but apart from that, you look really good, I must say. So, yes. For the 43-year-old officer, working in the senior citizen's detention center is a meaningful task. I had a prisoner up in Department D who came into the hospital today and has a pretty serious operation ahead of him. And he was quite simply afraid. So then we talked and after a half an hour or so, he really thanked me and said, Mr. Hase, it was good for me to talk to you. I feel better now. And of course, that makes me happy too and gives me a good feeling about it. For the criminals, he is more of a friendly assistant than a strict guard. South Carolina, USA. It is Friday morning. Children like eight-year-old Nola are now spending two days finding out what real prison life is like. The cops are real. The kids haven't done anything wrong yet, but they are difficult, have bad grades at school and hang out on the streets. Courtney, the mother of 14-year-old Nola, sees the test jail as a last resort. I felt bad, but I would feel even worse if I was somewhere having to identify him or anything of that nature. So, because the way he is, that's worse where he's at. That's why the cops are supposed to push the kids to their limits, physically and mentally. Cost to the parents $75. Some kids like Nola are in trouble because their friends are criminals. You run the street over there? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Talk. You run the street over there? You run one little gang? For the kids, it's now handcuffs on and off to the dark cells. In Germany, we meet the 78-year-old prisoner Hans Hesse. He has spent about half his life in prison. His impending release in four months frightens him. Yes, the uncertainty and the loneliness. That is, how can I put it? It takes some getting used to. It's not something I've had to do in that way before. Like most inmates here, he no longer has any family or friends. Hesse shows us his room, spacious and bright. This doesn't look like a prison cell, more like a retirement home with large windows. The cupboards are even equipped with a special gadget suitable for senior citizens. And everyone has their own room key. You could almost forget that the people here are criminals. 
I was smuggling a kilo of coke and three kilos of grass across the border, and thanks to a stupid coincidence, got caught just the other side of the border. A routine spot check, and I just had it in the car. For this, he got three and a half years in prison. The old drugs career was already 75 years old when he was caught. The oldest people here are in their mid-80s and frequently not too good on their feet anymore. That's why there are lifts here as well as wide corridors. It's Tuesday. We follow Warden Florian Hase into the yard. Here he runs a beekeeping group. Instead of a prison yard, there are lovingly designed gardens. Shall I help you fastening it? If you get a bee under here, we have to move fast and we don't want that. Warden Hase is not only concerned about the prison's own honey, but mainly about the effect his work has. One approach is to show the prisoners that when you deal with living creatures, with animals, that you have to treat them well. And they can then project that onto their own environment, on their fellow human beings, onto the environment of the prisoners. This way, these inmates also learn good manners in their old age. Slowly, slowly with the ladies here, otherwise you'll hurt them. Fresh air, a nice walk in the countryside with that nice officer Hase. It seems to us like a friendship between the warden and inmates that's gone on for years. But what does the warden really think about their crimes? When you deal with the cases, you try to understand what happened, but you don't have any understanding or sympathy for the prisoners. The pensioners' prison inmates don't actually have to work. All the activities are voluntary. And the beekeeping group is very popular. Beekeeping, cooking classes or senior citizen sports, that's not all. Before Corona, volunteers also organized trips to the swimming pool, cinema or theater because they'd prefer the inmates to pursue new hobbies after their release. In this prison, there are even balconies too. We are now in Robert's cell. Here they call it a living room. The balconies are closed off, but there is a nice view of the grounds through the huge windows. Comfortable beds are included, higher than usual and good for their backs. But where is Robert actually going? And why doesn't anyone stop him? He wants to go jogging with us. The 60-year-old doesn't have to ask if he can go out. He also has his own key for the door. The inmates are not only allowed to move around freely within the prison grounds during the day, they are also allowed to leave the prison if they get permission beforehand. Robert has only been in the open prison for six months. He still has about a year of his sentence ahead of him. Any great hardship? Not really. I don't really feel like I'm in prison. We've got the park, we can go out, we can go for a walk, we can go to the gym. I think it's actually better than doing assembly work. I think people like that sometimes feel even more separated than we do. Robert is actually an insurance broker. He sold insurance policies, got involved in financial irregularities and was given a three-year prison sentence, including one and a half years in an open senior prison. Considering his age, however, that wasn't too bad. Personally, I would say it's probably better to come inside later, because afterwards you don't have to concentrate on your image in your job, like maybe a 30-year-old does. However, starting completely from scratch at an advanced age and building a new future outside doesn't sound easy. The future. That's what it's all about in the US too. To make sure the kids here do not become delinquents, drastic means in the trial jail are intended to deter them. On the first day, contact to the parents is cut. I see my mom, my dad, my aunt, my grandmother, and I can't touch them. Because there's somebody behind me screaming, yelling, yelling, and not allowing me to touch. This is all because the parents want it. But can the children even understand what's happening? I feel 
that because I miss my mama. 14 year old Nola also looks very exhausted. Completely over the top? Or is this a sensible approach? Life is harsh, so what would you prefer? You would prefer for us to be hard on them in here to, to uh, keep them from coming in here? Or be out on the street and learn uh, street lessons, those harsh lessons, and end up in here? Which one is better? Prison also makes you lonely in Germany. That's why inmate Hesse meets with the prison's chaplain. Hello, Mrs. Biermann. Hello, Mr. Hesse. Nice to see you. Let's have a little walk. Yeah. In contrast to the normal prison, pastoral counseling is used and appreciated more in the senior citizens' prison because not everyone here has someone to talk to. Chaplain Angelika Biermann likes to listen and offer comfort. These meetings also help inmates to deal with their own thoughts of dying behind bars. If it happens that someone dies here, and it has happened, it brings the subject more to the fore. And then some people talk to us about it. Yes, that can also happen, it can. And how is it with me? I still have so many years ahead of me. Will that happen to me too? The fear of dying here is the greatest fear, because prisoners sometimes really are in for life. In the US trial prison, the kids are still alive and kicking. On day two, it's off to the nearby city park, doing community service. Lieutenant Neil is a co-founder of the program, and he wants to turn his bad experience into something positive. And the reason why I, my heart is in this program is because I once was an at-risk youth. I was actually a bad youth. Um, I did the gang banging. That's why we take so much pride in the program that we're doing. Um, because we all once were there. The police officers know what the kids are going through, and that's why they voluntarily sacrifice their weekend once a month for this, without pay. Deputy Graham even went through a similar program as a teenager. And, th and that's how we're able to relate to the kids. That's how we're able to relate to a whole lot of stuff on the street that we deal with, because we've been there, we've done that, we know what's going on. And that's why the U.S. cops are convinced of the success of this program and give it their all. Back in jail, the next endurance test awaits the kids. Confrontation with real criminals. Some of them are even serving time for murder. They really give it to the kids straight. If you want to play football, you come to jail, you better play football. Go to college. Be somebody like life. You can be doctors, lawyers, teachers, whatever you want to be. Even in the street, all that you're doing is cut your life short. That's it. That's all you're doing. Just tell me, the street is not the life you want to live in. This encounter leaves its mark on the boys. It changed, it changed from a little boy that I was to a man. It changed the whole attitude, changed the anger. Back in Germany, there is even a cafe in the prison park. Sweets and drinks are all very cheap. Hans Hesse's favorite are the isotonic drinks. He is due to be released in September. Social workers are already helping him to find his feet in freedom. For fear of falling back into bad company, he's even moving to a new town. He wants to finally draw a line. I don't want anything more to do with crime, it's over. I have to start all over again somewhere. And most of all, never lose courage. Hans Hesse looks to the future positively. His plan is to move into an assisted living community. And maybe there he can make a whole new start. The final hours are drawing to a close in the US prison for children. On Sunday, everyone has almost made it. Parents like Courtney have come to pick up their children. You could literally feel the tension. But did the children learn anything from the weekend? I'm sorry, I, le I think I learned my lesson and this program to stop just fit you and follow by your rules at all times. And 
Mama and my class, I am sorry for being bad at school and being disrespectful. The parents are relieved and so are the children. A prison deterrent for children as a weekend trip? The method seems questionable. But out of 750 children, only seven got in trouble with law again. So it seems the rest could have a better chance of a positive future. Roman gets the telephone number of the woman of his dreams, despite the fact that she's a prosecutor and he's in prison. What's going on here? To understand this, let's rewind back to the beginning. A story in which reporter Dion Wudu debunks 15 myths about prisons. And these are stories like you've never heard before. It all begins on a Thursday afternoon. Roman is on his way home when he meets this woman. Roman has never believed in love at first sight until, well, now. But he's too shy to approach her. And then it happens. Roman is completely lost in thought when someone bumps into him and slips something into his pocket. He's no idea what the consequences of this incident will be. Suddenly, everything happens like in a film. Roman is arrested and he doesn't even know why. Like they do with any suspect, the police first restrain him, but not with handcuffs. Are the police officers allowed to do this? Are cable ties allowed for handcuffing? Cable ties have actually become a popular alternative to handcuffs. Especially at larger events, it is more practical and easier to carry around 20 cable ties than 20 pairs of handcuffs. They are also cheaper. A cable tie like this doesn't even cost one euro. For stainless steel handcuffs, the state has to shell out at least 40 euros. The policemen don't exactly treat Roman gently. Get off! Get your hands off my head! It's for your own good. Why do the officers really put their hands on the suspect's head? The reason is, the officers don't want the suspect to hit his head on the roof of the car. Because if your hands are tied behind your back, it upsets your sense of balance and your movements become uncoordinated. A small side effect is that the suspect cannot jerk his head backwards. Roman is questioned at the police station. The charge? Robbery from a jeweler's. No one here believes he's innocent. Why don't you just admit it? We've a number of witnesses who saw you there at the time of the crime. It wasn't me. What do you want me to say? And you can't explain the stones we found at your place either? Never seen them before. Take some time to think about it. Maybe then you'll be a little more cooperative. Leaving a suspect alone is a popular interrogation technique. It works on Roman. He becomes more and more desperate. How could he have got into this situation? Roman feels he's being treated unfairly, and somehow it all reminds him of things that happen in America. Is this Guantanamo here or what? I've got my rights. Do prisoners in Guantanamo really have no rights? It is indeed the case that some prisoners in Guantanamo are deprived of their rights as prisoners of war. They are regarded as so-called unlawful combatants. This is not compatible with international human rights law. And although Barack Obama promised to close the facility when he took office, Guantanamo and this rights-free zone still exist today. Roman is remanded in custody. But what awaits him here? He's often heard that new arrivals are mistreated on the very first nights. Investigative custody does not automatically mean solitary confinement, and in Roman's cell, Hakan is the man in charge. Hey, that's my place. Or do you want to sleep with me? Get away. Roman is shocked. He thought sexual assault only happened in American prisons. Is that true? 
That's true. The extent of sexual assaults by fellow prisoners or guards is alarming. According to Human Rights Watch, an average of 380 rapes a day were reported last year. The number of unreported cases is probably even higher. Especially young prisoners without gang affiliations are considered sought after fresh meat there. Officially, this phenomenon does not exist in Germany. The mood in the cell is calm. Roman watches his fellow inmate Hakan, and as he does so, he notices something. Hakan no longer has laces in his shoes. Roman always thought that that was a myth. Are prisoners really not allowed to have shoelaces? Yes, there are, at least in Germany, because here things are only taken away if there's a risk of suicide. In America, every prisoner has to hand over everything he could use as a weapon, whether against himself or others. Hey, new guy, I didn't mean that earlier. I've got something for us. Fancy a drink? Roman has been in custody for just two hours. So far, Hakan has behaved anything but nicely towards him. But in prison, as so often in other emergency situations, people stick together because they're in the same boat. I thought alcohol was banned in prison. In prison you can get everything, you just have to know how. Is that so? Can you really get everything in prison? In principle, yes, because in almost every prison in the world there is a black market for drugs, cigarettes or even food. But it's no longer as easy as it was in the days of the legendary Al Capone. He is said to have lived like a king during his time in prison, thanks to corrupt guards. Roman has come to terms with his situation, but he still doesn't understand why he's here. Hey, new guy, why are you here anyway? I'm supposed to have robbed a jeweler, but I didn't do it. <laughs> None of us did. But you know what? What? You'll get a suspended sentence the first time anyway. You think so? Do you automatically get a suspended sentence for a first offence? No. A suspended sentence is only possible for custodial sentences for up to two years. And it is only granted if a favourable social prognosis can be made. So the hope is that bad guys will be good boys in the future. And why are you in here? I'm like Al Capone. They couldn't prove anything so far. So now I'm here for tax evasion. <laughs> he shot loads of people. There's no way he was inside for tax evasion. For what crime did Al Capone go to prison? It could never be proof that he committed murder. No witness ever wanted to testify against the boss of the Chicago underworld. Alfonso Capone only went to jail in 1929 for illegal possession of weapons and in 1931 for tax evasion and money laundering. But he still managed to continue his illegal business. Hakan is working on his escape. But he doesn't have an elaborate plan. He just wants to get out of here and do it as fast as he can. Roman is rather sceptical about the whole thing. I've had enough, I've got to get out. But you know you'll be in here longer if they catch you again, don't you? Is that so? Do you have to stay in prison longer after an escape attempt? No, you don't have to, at least not in Germany, because here, according to the law, breaking out of prison is not a criminal offence. After all, striving for freedom is a very understandable human instinct. However, you can hardly escape without committing a crime. For that, the guards would have to open the doors voluntarily and let the prisoner walk out with any resistance. Hakan is put in solitary confinement. The guards got wind of his escape attempt. And Roman, he's transferred to Ahmed, of all people. Ahmed was the one who'd had a go at Roman as soon as he was brought into the prison. Just leave me alone. I'm sorry about that before, I didn't mean it. I can't stand it in this hellhole any longer. Call this a hellhole? You know where my brother is? Parma Sola. That's really bad. You won't get out of there alive. 
Are the conditions in foreign prisons really so bad? Palma Sola actually is one of the toughest prisons in the world. It is a prison town in Bolivia that governs itself. There are guards only at the entrances and exits. In Congo, there is the Potembo prison. The prisoners here get nothing to eat unless visitors bring them something. 75% of them never get visitors. Without solidarity among the prisoners, most of them would starve to death. In Japan, there is the notorious Fuchu prison. This is pure horror. Inmates are not supposed to be rehabilitated but broken. Speech and gestures are forbidden. There are strict rules for prisoners even regarding their sleeping position. Those who don't comply are restrained and isolated for days. It's evening in the remand prison. The prisoners are being served their food in their cells. Roman too. What do you call this? Am I supposed to eat it? It's no different from what you normally get. Roman has heard a lot of bad things about prison food. But is it really as bad as its reputation? According to the German Food Society, an inmate needs at least 2,400 calories a day. Like other prisons, Berlin Tegel Prison has 2 euros 40 per man per day available for this. With this mini budget, providing a balanced, healthy diet and the minimum required calories is hardly possible. In addition, the cooks in prison even have to provide vegetarian or Muslim food. Roman is annoyed, and it's not just because of the bad food. He doesn't understand why no one realizes he's innocent. This is your first time here, isn't it? Yeah. It's my fourth. People just keep coming back. You get out, but you get no job. You have no chance. What do you do then? A petty crime, and ultimately, you just end up back in here. Your life's about to change. You'll see. It won't be like it was. Does a term in prison really turn you into a criminal? 90% of young people in prison in Germany actually re-offend after their release. Two-thirds even end up behind bars again. The reason is that young people from bad social backgrounds get recognition in prison for the first time and are thus susceptible of continuing a life of crime. Prison has a different effect on young people from intact parental homes. For them, prison is a lesson. There is no postal privacy in prison. Every letter is checked by the prison management. What about those other letters? They're for serial killers. They always get so many. Why is that? They get one marriage proposal after another. What? Women like serial killers. Roman is puzzled. Are women attracted to serial killers? That's true. Some women suffer from what is called hybristophilia. Usually they have a dominant father and a weak mother. Violence is their normality. They're afraid of it and yet they long for it. But why murderers of all people? Behind bars they are harmless, but at the same time they radiate power and dominance. Hakan can't believe it. He thinks that sentences for murderers in Germany are far too light anyway. In America, such people would face the death penalty. It's nonsense. Ah, calm down, relax. In America, it doesn't work either. They go around butchering each other every day, despite the death penalty. Does the death penalty really have a deterrent effect? No statistics so far confirm any deterrent effect of the death penalty. This is because most homicides occur in extreme situations or in the heat of the moment. Calm reflection and consideration of the consequences of the crime are impossible in such moments. And even murderers who carefully plan their deed beforehand do not think about a possible death penalty. They are convinced anyway that they will never be caught. The prosecutor wants to see Roman. She has good news for him and somehow she looks familiar. Roman is exonerated. The real culprit has been caught. We would like to ask you not to file a claim for damages, OK? OK. But isn't Roman entitled to damages? 
Yes, he is. In the case of a miscarriage of justice, the wrongly accused is entitled to compensation. For police custody, this is 11 euros per day minus a daily allowance of 6 euros. So he's left with 5 euros per day. In addition, there's compensation for any financial loss incurred, such as loss of wages during the custody period. And that's when it happens. The prosecutor gives Roman her phone number in case he has any questions. And then he realizes where he's seen this incredible woman before. She was the one who somehow got him into this mess in the first place. This bakery in Padua is currently making the best Easter bread in Italy. But they also make many other sweet delicacies here. Very good. They taste very good with cream or chocolate. The bakers are obviously all masters of their trade, but they all have a past you can't see at first glance. I killed someone. I'm in here for murder. The bakery is located in a high-security prison in Padua in the northern Italian region of Veneto. It's home to around 600 serious criminals who have been sentenced to years of imprisonment. 200 of them have a permanent job here. At the entrance, we meet Matteo Macchetto, the boss of the company Pasticceria Giotto. He accompanies us to the bakery. On our way there, we first have to pass through four security lots. Where is the bakery located and why we have to pass so many gates? The bakery is inside the prison walls. From their cells, the inmates access the workplace through a corridor. So it's as safe as in the prison itself. In addition to the prison inmates, there are also about 250 judicial officers in this building who we are not allowed to film for security reasons. We continue to make our way through the security gates. Here we come to the last checkpoint before the bakery. And this is now the last corridor that leads us to the facility's working area. And how is it for you to work in a prison? It's a great experience. It's discover that uh, and hope for everybody. Mm -hmm. Anche even if you have done something very, very bad. After about 30 minutes, our team finally reaches the bakery. Since 2005, 50 serious criminals have been working here. They all completed a baker's apprenticeship in prison and now bake cakes for the Pope, among others. One of them is Giacchino. In 2010, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. I killed somebody. I've learned a lot since, but it's too late now. It takes a second, maybe two seconds, and you don't even know how it happened. But here in prison, you have a lot of time to think about it. Because Giacchino shows remorse, he is allowed to work in the bakery. In 1989, the now 54-year-old owned a small pizzeria in Berlin. He had to give up the business, go back to Italy, and ended up on the wrong side of the tracks. The result was a long, hard prison sentence. In prison, the cell was locked most of the time. We were only allowed outside for two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. And there wasn't a lot of space there either. One of his colleagues is Massimo. He also had his own pizzeria in Germany for 12 years before he turned criminal in Italy. In 2011, he ends up in prison and has to share a nine square meter cell with three other prisoners. It was bad, upstairs every day, in the room, watching TV or playing cards, not a normal day. When you're at work, the day goes by, it's totally different. He has been working in the bakery for five years now. He has to serve another three and a half years. Why he ended up in prison is something he obviously doesn't like to talk about. I can't really say what I did. I didn't kill anybody, but something really bad. 
in Italy. The inmates work half a day and a regular 20-hour week. They also get a salary of 500 to 600 euros a month, and they also pay into the pension fund. I have to get up at 5 a.m. every day, half an hour before work, have a coffee, cigarette, make the bed. Half past six, I have to be downstairs until 12 or 1 o'clock, depending on how much there is to do, sometimes 2 or 3 o'clock. The fact that prisoners in Italy are engaged in paid employment is a total exception. Of about 56,000 prisoners, only about 1,500 work, whereas Germany's 51,000 prisoners are actually obliged to work. In Italy, prison jobs like working in a bakery are a privilege and highly sought after by the prisoners because they bring some variety to everyday prison life. Before I worked, I was depressed, like everyone else. We're all like that. It's a different life here. Everyone outside thinks it's hard. It's a completely different life. But with work, there's always something to do, always something new. You have more desire to live. Giacchino has found his will to live again. Matteo Concolato also experiences this positive energy every day. He is one of seven external master bakers and managers who look after and train the prisoners. Anyone who comes here really wants to work. The inmates really want to. They're all very good workers. And you can feel that in the way everyone treats each other. Matteo's only problem, whenever criminals are released or transferred, he often has to train new bakers. And that is not always easy. The biggest problem is to keep everyone together, because many people are not used to work. First, I have to teach them to listen and then to work. That's the biggest challenge. This way, prisoners are prepared for life after prison. But even if the bakery is a friendly place, strict supervision remains essential. There are various types of knives here, because we need knives for this work. So far, nothing has happened yet. I just always check that all the knives are still there. Here's a list, and three or four times a day, I check if the knives are still there. We want to find out how popular the bakery's pastries are outside the prison. At the beginning of the 19th century, the prisoners were housed here, at Carraresa Castle in the centre of Padua. Since the new prison opened in 1981, there are now just a few offices for the prison administration located here. Only a few metres away, we find one of the prison bakery's two shops. So, how good are these cakes made in prison? Tastes very good, delicious. I didn't know these products were made in prison, but I'm very happy to support this project. I think it's a great idea. Even if people have done something wrong, it is important that you help them and that they can become part of this organization. It's the first I've heard about this project and I think it deserves recognition. A really good project. The special thing about the cakes is that they are handmade. The Easter loaves, the so-called Colombe, are the top seller. Up to 10,000 were produced this year. And those allowed to work here have to go through a long vetting process. There's an official office with two psychologists. Once the prison warden decides to approve the prisoner, an interview is conducted, and if all goes well then, they're allowed to do an internship. And after that, they can start working. Domenico also went through this process. He has already been in prison for seven years and he has another nine years ahead of him. He doesn't want to reveal why he's serving time. For me, everything has changed for the better since I've been here, especially mentally. I now have a real life again and contact with people who come in from outside. I don't always think about the same things all the time. Your whole life changes when you're allowed to work here. I can also send money to my family. That's one of the secrets of the project's success. The work doesn't just give the prisoners a purpose, but also some recognition at home. 
A nice story to understand how important the work is for the people here is that one of our employees told me that his son hung his father's first paycheck next to a Cristiano Ronaldo poster in his room because he was so proud of his dad. This satisfaction is also reflected in the reoffending rate. Only 10% of the prisoners reoffend after release. The average in Italy is 70%. The finished pastries are now packed and prepared for delivery by Maurizio. He has already been in prison for 23 years, but thanks to the job, he has plans for the future. I'm in here because I killed someone, but in six years I'll finally get out and I already have a dream. I want to go back to my old profession and work as a stonemason. Delivering the cakes is much more complicated than in a normal bakery. Two or three vans have to pass strict security checks every day so that none of the prisoners can sneak out. This takes up to one hour. In the meantime, Matteo shows us the bakery's most prominent customer. The Pope has found out that these products are produced here in prison. And so he decided that he'd like to order panettone for the Vatican. We are very proud and enthusiastic and can see that our work is achieving something very beautiful and very good. Serious criminals making something beautiful? It actually works. The prisoners have even prepared a little surprise for our editor, Anja. Anja! This is a present from me, a heart. Thank you. Just so that you don't think we're only criminals, under the surface, all the inmates are just people like everyone else. Baked with love by tough guys. And incidentally, you can also order these prison cakes on the internet and have them delivered to Germany.